Hello, internet friends. My name is Bay, and welcome to it. Bay talks about this is the Warbringers, the final one, the Ajara. And when I first sat down here to start making notes and recording this and looking over what I could talk about. I actually, at first, didn't really think there was a much to go over. This is basically just sort of an update bringing players that may not even know who Ajara is up to speed, and it's an origin story. It confirms a certain number of great little details, and it's very beautiful, as any of these are, of course. And I'm going to go over a couple of key points that I picked out, and just little, like, film cinematic references and sort of how different scenes play to each other. But it doesn't have as much to dig into, more than the fact that you just sort of watch it appreciate the cinematography in the the 2.5d feel like you're drowning with a jar that was incredibly awesome but this is not the way to watch this so please go watch it for yourself i'll link it below in the description if you haven't seen it yet watch it completely by yourself and then come back here and listen to me babble about it because we're gonna kind of like, like jump around a bunch and then like just watch a chunk and talk about it so the first thing i wanted to bring up here is another shout out real quick to Wowpedia if you want to learn more about Queen Ajara in her full nature and her background and all this other stuff is you may not know how much of a impact this event which is what you're witnessing in this Warbringer is the Great Sundering because this is the drowning of the the Night Elven Empire back in the day basically but what this does really show is the nature of Ajara as a character and just how ridiculously powerful in so many ways that she is. So all this stuff can be, you can, you can scrub through here and read all this stuff about Ajara if you'd like. But the one thing I wanted to make sure I brought up at the top here is why this happened and then why what happens in the Warbringer. So, back in the day, 10,000 plus years ago, when the Well of Eternity destabilized because Ajara was using it with her Highborn, they made contact with the Dark Titan Sargeras and the Burning Legion, and they were basically ushering in the demons onto Azeroth. There was a Night Elven Rebellion that happened... And that's when we destabilize, collapse, swallowing immense swath, swathes, swaths of land in the Great Sundering. Ajara and many of her highborn followers, which is a weird part. I said Night Elven Queen. She's listed as just the Kaldori Empire Queen, but at the time it was still High Elven. But in in any of her depictions, she is still like blue skinned. She's like the vain queen. She's definitely this this very much this, yeah, the vain glorious and the queen of madness are her ways. But I don't know. Her art, even in game, her art right here, she's blue. Like she's night elven kind of, but she's not. They're highborn. So there's a back and forth, like the time period. Oh, what is it? doesn't matter. Elven queen. But they were sank beneath the sea and she makes a pact, which is awesome to watch visually in this with Nazoth, or Enzoth, depending on how you want to pronounce the old god names. So she went from basically one terrible enemy, which is Sargeras and the Legion, and once that didn't work, <laughs> she just picked the next best thing, I suppose. But it shows you sort of how Ajara adapts to her situations at hand. This is the Shrine of Storms music in the background, just so I'm not talking over empty air. But we'll back up here and listen to the opening bit here. And again, we'll jump around a bunch. But the opening part of this is a totally different segment. It has like its own feel. So you hear the, the the water rushing in very, very, very slightly. Again, in any sense of like a, in movie lore or whatever, you've always seen this before with um, birds flying away from danger. So your opening shot here is just like, okay, awesome. High elven, elven architecture, all this stuff just careening off in the distance, right? Beautiful landscape. And then the water and the darkness rushes in from the left. 
Remember Left of Frame? I talked about this before in the old soldier cinematic, and people were like, what you're talking about doesn't make any sense, doesn't make any blah, blah. Not real, doesn't, that's not how narrative stuff, well, yeah, it's just all, you're, you're talking about your ass. This is totally all really concrete, decided upon movements in the film world, because you have to keep things either symbolic or even or balanced in the frame. So left frame is where the darkness starts. And that's where the darkness, the, the old god-oriented stuff, is in the entire piece, is left of frame. So anyway, the bird's flying away, and here comes the giant wave, the great sundering. And can we get some Fs in chat for the old elven empire? I don't want to make like a meme of this. This is just the architecture here, but the first time I watched this, I didn't notice it. So the second time I went back and watched this, you know how you ever see faces in things that you shouldn't see faces? Who else saw this building here basically screaming? Like eyes, nose, and just like mouth. It's like a terrible, I know you're going to be like, ah, cannot unsee, they ruined it. But at the same time, I don't know if that's, it's not intentional, because all the other structures here, obviously, there's the big high arches, blah, blah, blah. But I thought, when I watched this again, because I've watched this a few times already to talk about this, I was like, that's a screaming building. Even the buildings are screaming, because we're about to have a lot of screaming elves. The one big thing that you'll also hear a lot in this is the use of audio. So a 2.5D, right? Not fully animated. It's not 3D, right? It has obviously visuals and audio. And as I've talked before in any of the other cinematic analysis, you can go back and watch those. I've done all the other Warbringers and the Old Soldier. Is audio... Once you know about the cinematic storytelling universe and you know, understand cinematic grammar and you and you like lived and breathed like episodic TV and movies and even theater, sound is so much more of what we process than visuals. Because usually visuals will, will flash before our eyes and our eyes only depict so much and frame rate, blah, 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 whatever. Sound sticks with you and sound is a more of a tone and emotional setter than even just visuals. Now, coupled together, obviously, very powerful. But there are so many moments in this where the sound just ends and you're left with what the visual is telling you or what the sound ended with. And in this sequence, when the wave stops, all we hear is Ajara straining under the weight of the shield and we get our first fit glimpse of the fish. Now again, left of frame. The fish is left and center frame. Ajara is right. We have the fish, which of course, if you, you know, spoiler alert, it's basically a herald of Nazoth, I suppose, or it's a representation of Nazoth. We see fish full frame. Ajara is in the reflection in the water. The next shot moves in. We see, again, it's all Ajara, but the fish is still left of frame. Now we see Ajara, but the fish is a reflection in her eye. And again now, fish full frame, but still, it's still left and center frame. And then Ajara, being closer to the right of frame, is now a reflection in the fish's eye. And now it's just full. I don't know. I, I had to look up. I had. Oh, I closed the tab. Uh, so, because I was wondering, Nazoth in this piece apparently is played by Darren DePaul. Darren DePaul is so many voices in World of Warcraft. He's the voice of Reinhardt, which you may know him the most in Overwatch. And so, Nazoth is the weakest of the old gods of Azeroth. 
And he is called the Corrupter in Hearthstone. He's just the god of the deep in WoW. But I don't know if this is a thing that... Because the old gods let you hear whispers. Right? We all know the famous Cthulhu whispers. We also get the whispers through the Ilganoth tree and the whole Nihilotha stuff, right? Which is basically also Nazoth in that regard. So this female whisper is sort of just Azara, I thought, originally, like, her hearing her inner monologue, but I'm pretty sure it's Nazoth messing with her. Uh, let go. No! I am queen. This is the empire I built. It is over. Uh, This whole sequence right here from like a, a PowerPoint is so good because all of this is show you so much of what Ajar was fighting about, fighting for, and the whole notion of like a you know, queen is only a queen or a king's only a king if they rule. And that's also a, a undertone of this whole piece. But this shot when the water cascades in and breaks through her shield and you still see her face the whole time. Very specifically, she has been swallowed by not only everything that she has done in the past, but now has to, you know, deal with this choice of chasing power and losing. And losing very, very <laughs> straightforward. Uh, you try to go after demons, you fail. Uh, your city is drowned. Uh, this is, this is what you don't. Don't talk to demons, kids. <laughs> the end of the soundtrack right there from the back end actually is overwhelmed in the waves. And then again, as if you're being drowned with Ajara, silence. Now, I'll open this part real quick because I, I want to talk about how this sequence may be real time-ish. So her, like, how much breath she held, whatever. But elven magic, elven biology, the fact that Ajara is one of the most powerful mages to ever exist in our lore. Holding your breath, I don't know if that is a thing or how long they can. You know, leave a comment down below. How long can elves hold their breath? I have no idea. Right, they were immortal beings, and now without the power of the Well of Eternity, or you know, even the um, the diluted Sun Well, or the the fruit that the um, the Nightborn now have, elves live like seven thousand years apparently, so they still live a long time. But I don't know about how they only can breathe underwater. <laughs> I have no idea. There's a bit of grim acceptance in this shot. She's no longer a queen. Her tiara floats away. And there's just this moment of realization. I don't think there's any real... The darkness surrounding her pulling in. I mean, that's just simple stuff. She sees her dead people around her. And the big thing about this, the crown in the light is very well of eternity oriented, right? It's the bright, the yellow, that pure white elven magic light because the next time you see a full frame like this this giant eyeball looking shot it is definitely not well of eternity themed not at all so keep that in mind when we get to that part of the video there's a little bit of tentacle action This is my fault. No, 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 this, no, this was not the deal I made. So again, it's a really cool sequence of just like that, that terror, that anguish, that defeat, that horror effect of her losing the choice that she made to get more power with the Legion and all of a sudden it fails, blah, 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 and her eyes and all that lighting up stuff, right? Again, now we're talking about left of frame. 
<laughs> deal. I like deal. Who are you? Show yourself at once. The whole deal description about old gods is that old gods like making deals. I think Nazoth may be a little bit more. Again, he's the weakest one, so I guess more in his backstory is that he's always sort of, you know, been skeeving and conniving behind the scenes because the other three old gods are just way above and beyond him. So, and this is just Nazoth backstory. Hmm. For a thousand years, bound beneath these waves, I have watched you. One thing I didn't pick up here on the first time I watched through is the aura, or like the magic around Ajara in this frame. You'll watch as it pulls away from her ever so slightly. I have tasted your essence. You. It won't be long now. The same eyeball that was the reflection in earlier of the early fish is the one that's covered in this shot, just keeping the cement, the, the symmetry of the shot. It's her right eye. It's, it's again, it's left of frame. When death is near. Only I can sustain you. Let go. Serve me. You? You are nothing. Not this point comes into play, the, the word play back and forth here. All this dialogue is so well put together and written and just really showing you the power and the defiance of what Ajara is, which is a cool character building moment. I'm not going to lie. It's very interesting. From our player perspective, all the players know is that she's just another crazy elf that went for power and, you know, failed. And now she's an even crazier half squid, you know, octopus Ursula elf. And we're going to take her out in a raid. You know, that's basically what we know. But giving more depth to these characters to, to know a little more their motivation behind the scenes. It's funny reading some scuttlebutt on Twitter about how, you know, like when this, when Ajara, an obvious villain is even more like you can sympathize with her more than Sylvanas right now because Sylvanas has just jumped the shark crazy. <laughs> hey, you can go back and watch the, uh, the Sylvanas Warbringer breakdown I did where I was just like, but why? I am a god! My favorite, favorite shot in the entire bit here. I'm going to rewind it because the, the power of the audio and the visuals in this sequence, the two eyes of Ajara, the uncertainty, the wide-eyed nature of her, juxtaposed right to the Nazoth reveal of his eyes and his scope and his vision and his power is so good. Only I can sustain you. Let go. Serve me. You? You are nothing. Nothing? <laughs> I am a god! Before you walk this land, I ruled. So, the color change of the light with Nazoth being that yellow-red, that very intense, like, almost heat emanating. Also, this shot of Nyalotha, it's kind of pulled, like, right from the Chronicle. Damn cool. Damn, damn cool. Cool. Now, I don't know. It kind of looks very Cthulhu-ish, like with the whole like crown, like onion, you know, bobblehead he's got going on over there, right? That like bloom of what looks like Cthulhu. But I guess all the old gods are kind of like that. We just haven't really seen Nazoth canonized in World of Warcraft. All we have is his art from Hearthstone, and he's kind of like an angry shark head with eyes and then with tentacles. So I don't know. This we'll set to see. All this Serve left to frame. And we will rebuild my empire. No. 
the realization frame, the devious nature, because this is what Ajara did with the old gods. Not the old gods, before the old gods, with, with, with the Burning Legion, with Sargeras. She was basically trying to use other things for her advantage. And again, when she's presented with another potential opportunity to do the same thing, it happens. Lo and behold, Nazoth takes the deal, as we all know, but this, this eye, eye, the eye line change from being blown away by everything that Nazoth is offering is, just shows you how confident or arrogant Ajara is. No! So she proposes in the deal. This shot right here, I want to jump over to the end. Again, like spoilers or whatever. You already watched this a couple times. That shot right there is totally mirroring this shot. When she's then transformed into Queen Ajara as we know her today. The hair in that shot. Let me go back to like four. Yeah, right there. They're really, really similar in composition. Whereas the tentacles of the old god, right? The Nazoth presence is coming into frame. But once she is then transformed, there is no need for that because she is already, you know, the tentacles are part of her. It's quite neat when you look at that, those little, those art narrative points there. Slave. Not a slave. You've watched me for a thousand years. So you know what I want. The breathing of Nazoth is so good. So I've talked about camera angles before and in a drawn sense, drawn camera angles, a little harder to like depict or at least show because you're just not putting the camera as a Dutch angle, like a 45 or a 30 down below the character. This is still a raised chin, at least somewhat down Dutch angle looking up at Ajara. A lowered camera angle is to show dominance in the frame. It usually makes characters look bigger in presence. It because it usually it, it will emphasize shoulders or facial structure from that angle. It's showing her power shift. There are two ways you can show power shift in cinema. Usually, total shift is usually you can rotate the camera, so you can go. You can take a character from right of frame and move them to left of frame, like the behind the shoulder camera move. Or you would you would do a pan down or a pan up a raised camera angle looking down at a subject normally means weaker or subservience or make them smaller in the frame make them feel more insignificant a again a, a lowered camera angle looking up at your subject is to show dominance in the frame and to show power so quite literally the camera shifts to show the power shift between azoth and Queen Ishara. Take my people. With them, I will raise an army, conquer your enemies, build an empire. Her eyes and the, the, her expression change is so good. Or let me die. Also, the one thing about the whole, like, showing the, the, the lower angle here, too, this whole sequence here, showing the, the pillars of Nihilotha, this old god structure, and obviously these gigantic tentacles, the voice continuously breathing behind the scenes here, and just how much of the frame is Nazoth, and this small little floaty drowning elf can just talk to it. And win the bargain. Let and yes, there's there the, the memes are gonna happen. It's you know, Nazoth, I have come to bargain instead of oh gosh, it's can we get some photoshops of Queen Ajara instead of Doctor Strange? Just we need that. Please. Hit me up on Twitter, Final Boss TV, link down below in the description. I, I need these. Please. Terrible photoshops. Just put Ajara's face over Doctor Strange. Just do it. Me die, and you will remain here, a prisoner, the god of nothing. So that's that facial expression change right there is really telling. So that's like curious eyebrows, and then complete. You've lost eyebrows, at least in this moment. Nothing. 
I don't want to pause. Uh, the, the soundscape right here is amazing. But if you pause this and watch through this frame, this is obviously just like filters and distorting the image. If you stop right here-ish, do you see like a giant gaping fish maw? It's right here. Looks like, like the head of a fish and like a giant like... Rah! fish maw right really subtly i had to pause and watch this again back when i got like my second or third time watching you through but neat little symbolism hidden in the rack focus back into ajara as she is waiting for the answer and possibly drowning and dying you can kind of see it right there too and it gets a little bit whoops that's the wrong button don't mute it's right uh, i'm trying to go frame by frame here yeah, right when her face distorts back in. It's like right there. It's really, ugh. Confident, smarmy face. This whole drowning sequence is really, really good. It's very uncomfortable. Even the camera, whenever she like losing air. The camera f loses focus. thing I'm wondering about this now we haven't had this like the Nazoth anthem the Nazoth theme these war drums is interesting I don't know if anyone knows what kind of drum or drum structure this is that knows more about like music and and giant orchestral pieces and whatnot but that is not like horde drums like horde war drums don't sound like this those are very tribal this I don't know if this is more like it's gotta be like Polynesian based or something because we haven't had, cause obviously Nazoth is the God of the depths, right? Old God of the sea, whatever. Old God of the tides. What does it say? What is his, his like little tagline here? He's like a bunch of different titles, but I mean, cause Nyalotha is the drowned city, all this stuff. But I, I wonder like where are these drums, cause you know, first time I've heard this kind of stuff before. So I wonder how this theme will transfer into the game and be part of the music we're going to hear soon. And again, another small figure. She's in the darkness this time until... Going back to the original thing we talked about with the crown and the white-ish glow of the Will of Eternity into this. And then the circle comes in, which used to be her tiara in the opening shot, which is now obviously Nazoth's eye. So the Magnificent there is interesting because she said that before. And if you listen to the voice here. Magnificent. That is definitely a, a just shock and awe moment with Magnificent there. But this is just maniacal. It is, she finally has what she's been after. At least in this form. Yeah. Is my queen. She has her, like, Joker laugh, basically. <laughs> really, really outstanding stuff. Uh, just a lot more, like, 
straightforward, I guess, symbolism between different scenes. There's the elven stuff, the old god stuff. And again, left of frame is really a big deal. The use of sound is fantastic in this. We're listening to this with headphones. Like if you have like really good headphones, um, these are nice, but these are definitely not cinematic headphones. They don't have the dynamic range that like a pair of like really good expensive cinematic headphones would have. And again, YouTube compression. I would love to listen to this on the actual like editing rig software on like audio headphones or in the actual sound booth. Because I, I cannot even imagine, as a sound designer, how many layers and little pieces you had, or how little you had, that you had to control to make sure you fine-tuned. Because audio, to me, as like a director-producer brain, so much respect. Because I can understand it, and I can ask for or discuss what I would like or what I can hear. But how to do it? No idea. No idea whatsoever. But that is my thoughts for the Azura Warbringer. It's good. Very good. They're all fantastic. Just in their own little way. And uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think. Again, go watch the entire thing for yourself. Link down below. As well as the uh, previous Bay Talks about for Old Soldier, Sylvanas, and Jaina. Those are both, or all three, are right here on the channel. And of course, all my social media is down below as well. If you want to hit me up on Twitter with those awesome memes of the uh, the Doctor Strange edit, I, I we need them. If they're already being made, it's so good. That's it's it's way too on the nose not to have those created. But thank you very much for listening and going on this little journey with me through the Ajara Warbringer. And let me know what you think of my little cinematic film nerd analysis breakdown. If you picked up on little things, if you didn't see and I've ruined the whole thing for you with the screaming building, <laughs> I'm sorry. But thank you very much for watching. And of course, I will, I'll see you where I see you on the internet, Twitter, YouTube, or on my Twitch channel. Thank you very much for listening and watching. And I will see you all in the next video of sorts or place when I put things on the internet. I don't know what I do here. And as the music fades out awkwardly on my end card, there it is. <laughs>